Father, bless what we say to your glory, that uh, we that this would uh, edify the body, that what we learn would be multiplied, that it would uh, save our soul, that it would um, quicken us even tonight, God. And we're excited about you right now in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so vigilant, uh, it means to abstain. It, the, the, the Greek word is nepho, N-E-P-H-O, to abstain from wine or to be circumspectly. And the next word you see after that is sober. But vigilant, to abstain from something, to abstain from wine. It abstain, like in Ephesians chapter 5, be not drunk with wine, but filled with the Holy Spirit. It's like, be filled with something. Abstain from what will not satisfy you. Like, maybe this is what, you know, like, imagine if, 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 if a man doesn't have control of his, of his lust, of his needs that are outside of God. Okay? And like, he has the ability to... to um, make a decision to choose what is best for his soul. And he's not feeding the, the temporary something that says, I will satisfy, but that cries out immediately afterwards. You know, it mocks us. In, you know, in Proverbs 20, verse 1, wine is a mocker and it's, it's raging. And it's like, it's loud, it's speaking. It's speaking to, it speaks. Um, I remember one time coming, like, <laughs> Jerry's in the class, but like, you know, like, if you, if, you're, if you ever did sales, and it's like, and like, your identity is based upon sales, and you don't sell, you become a loser, a bad person, and your identity gets really hurt. And I remember like driving home and it's like literally like it was like wine was like was like raging it was like like the the bars were like hey that was like hey what you know and you lose perspective when you lose your identity and wine literally starts raging and says i will satisfy it does it has that ability Okay, just so just so you know, it has that ability. And this is and you know, my example is when my identity was not correct, and when our identity is not correct, Satan Satan has all kinds of things that that will satisfy our lusts. Okay? When our identity is not correct. Do you think it's important for us to know who we are in Christ? It's very important for us to know who we are in Christ because then we can actually make decisions about what is best for me. If I don't know who I am in Christ, I don't know what I'm choosing. You know what I mean? I don't know what's the value, what's the reasoning of what I'm choosing. I'm just like drifting along. We need to be, Paul told Timothy in 2nd, what is it? 2nd Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, to be strong in the grace of God. Okay, um, well, that's not really applicable to like our identity. Um, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Um, like to for us to know, like you know, we, we use the word identity. It's so that we we know why we're making a decision. If we don't know why we're making a decision, why are we here? Like, why is our identity important? And so I can make a, a decision. I belong to the Grunewald family, and I'm making decisions like that. And I belong to, I, I'm a child of God, and I'm making decisions. I know what is best for me and who I should obey. If I don't know who, if I'm a child of God, like, or, or I don't know my identity, it's very easy for me to stray. And this is why we're putting doctrine in our souls to tell us who we are in the grace of God. Okay, so, so that we can abstain from something and we know why we're actually abstaining from it. Okay? 
Okay, sober. Oh, this goes. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5. That might be good to look at. Okay, Ephesians chapter 5. Where for? Yes. Do you remember what you just said? You said when my enemy is not correct, Satan will say, try to satisfy it? Well, when, when, but Satan has many, like, uh, you could say uh, opportunities or many. Uh, uh, resources or many uh, temptations or many uh, he's got many things available to, to like satisfy us when I don't know my identity right it's like it's like I'm like just I'm, I'm like uh, I'm wide open for anything that's it's like oh okay that satisfies me but it's not relating to who I am in Christ and therefore there's there's no con there's no consequences if I don't know who I am okay Um, okay, so we're so we're talking about the, the I don't redeeming the time. Why did I say this? okay? Oh yeah, verse fifteen. See that you, verse Ephesians chapter five that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, be not unwise, but understanding. Wow, understand. We're choosing the will of God. I'm obeying God's will and not my will. If I don't know my identity, I have no reason to place value on God's will. Everything I choose is my will, right? So this is a qualification of an elder of a of a uh, of an overseer is that he actually, you know, uses his decisions to abstain from something because he knows what he's choosing and he's sober in his mind and let's look at acts chapter 24 x 24 verse 16 this is an incredible verse to think about this this is if you're on the mission field planning to go on the mission field if you know of anybody on the mission field if you've ever heard of the word missions you should circle this verse okay is anybody not circling it? Okay. Did I leave anybody out? Okay. Uh, 24, verse 16. Okay, herein do I exercise myself. I have always... Herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards man. Wow, that is, that's like this word here, sober, like a safe mind. One of the greatest dangers of any um, overseer is actually to serve man and to live in the fear of man. And he's plagued. An overseer can be plagued by having a conscience that lives before man, right? And he's motivated to actually serve man. And sometimes women can, they just, they just want to please. And they know if they please, it gets them into a lot of trouble because they just want to please. And this is, this is speaking of this for men and women. Like, we're void of that. Of, but we actually have a clean conscience before God and before man. We're living in the balance. Okay? And just because you please man does not mean that you are serving God. And you can be addicted to serving man and never actually serving God. And a leader can actually serve man and never re relate to God. And be and look and and act extremely, you could say, successful, right? Right, Philip? Do you understand what we're saying? Okay, so this is like my conscience is clean. This is I, I, I said it before also in uh, first the second Corinthians chapter four, where this is just like this is the greatest tool in warfare, a clean conscience. Like, you're, you know, we just said, you know, he's walking circumspectly. He's living before God. He has a safe mind. But he's, 
he he has this he has this innocence when when someone tries or this boldness when some tr- someone tries to put dirt on him okay and in warfare he doesn't see the heat and jeremiah said he doesn't see the heat when it comes he's oblivious to it because he's you know if you're serving man and all of a sudden man is coming towards it's like you know everything's falling apart but when you're living in the balance correctly it's like well, it's, i don't understand this you don't see it instead of if you don't see it, you, you're, you're multiplied with wisdom. But if you're living, serving man, you're multiplied with fear. Okay? Okay, so that was, uh, let's go back to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Okay, so, um, yes. Serving one another versus serving man. Wait, did I say that? You serve one another? What, what was the question? And serving man, submitting one to another. Um, and you want me to answer that? What is, how do you, I, I love the principle of, okay, submitting one to another. Submitting one to another. In fear of God, you submit one to another. Um, see, this is, this is, the, when, when offices are so highly, well, let me think about that, okay? Let me think. I, like, I don't want to just say something right now, okay? But maybe we'll say something in class, right? Because I, 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 I like that thought, okay? Okay. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 3. So we'll come back to that thought. Maybe we'll answer that at the end of the question. I didn't speak about, I did speak about not giving to wine, really. I spoke about that. Be sober, be a good behavior. I don't know, it'll be of good behavior. Oh, yeah. It's like this is speaking about the woman in First, in first uh, Timothy chapter 2, uh, the way that she adorns herself. It's like they have this beauty, but it's not a selfish beauty. They have a behavior, but it's not a selfish behavior. Like a woman could adorn herself to draw attention to herself. But our behavior is not behavior to actually draw attention to ourselves. Okay, this is, it's the same word. It deals with the word cosmopolitan, cosmos, you know, an order, an order. In, it does, and this, is, this has a behavior that does not draw, it's very orderly, and it doesn't draw attention to itself. Okay? Um, let's see, where are we? No. Oh, yeah. Thanks. A good behavior given to hospitality. Hospitality, hospitality, phileo, and then the other word is stranger, phileo. Does anyone know phileo? Brotherly phileo, brotherly, brotherly to a, a stranger. Friendly to a stranger. That's the Greek word. I think xenox or whatever the word for stranger is. But it's like this, this friend to... Um, oh, that's so important. That's so important. She sits here for four years and these, these, these two girls get to know each other. And they've never been a friend to a, a stranger. Strange girls. They're strange girls. They're not friend to strangers. They're strange girls. If you're not friend, if you're not, did I say friend to sinners? If you're not friend to strangers, you are strange. Okay, I'm not putting a fake burden on you. But you, it's like, that's what this is saying. It's like, you're a friend to somebody. Str- well, how are they going to hurt you? Why don't you love? Did you ever try to love them? Don't be strange. 
This is where cliques actually develop. Nobody is, you know, everybody is like, you know, a clique is the Tower of Babel. Did God break up the Tower of Babel? It was one big clique. They all spoke the same language, all kinds of evil in there, and they trusted themselves. They didn't trust God. God had to break it up. If you're not friends, just like, we don't let them in our group. It's like, this is our little group here. Like, we're secure here. Don't come into our little group. Don't go out of our group as if we might lose somebody from our group. We're not like friends to strangers. It's like, where's the group then? If we're friends to strangers, what group am I involved in? Right? What group? What age group? Is there any age groups in the church? No, we're friend to, I don't even know how old you are. You know, we're friend to, you know, like every, we're, we're like, what does it happen to uh, homogenized? You know, the, the milk fat is like, yeah, homogenized. It's, sep- it's completely, perfectly distributed. Okay, the milk fat is distributed in the milk perfectly. And it, it can't like, it can't be, you know, and, you know, become a click and just be the, the milk on the top. Okay, we're friend of strangers. We're all mixed together. And this is a, a quality, you know, given to hospitality. Okay? That's good. Is, is that, is that so, that's one of the most healthy principles you could ever learn. And you know what? And just like the Tower of Babel, the devil has to take a hike when you're friend to strangers. The devil is like, doesn't know what to do. The devil knows what to do in your little, you know, speaking all the same language, your little group. The devil's got you controlled. Man, you are like the target. One bomb and it's like everybody's destroyed. One lie and everybody believes the lie. That was the problem of the, you know, everybody speaking the same language, okay? So we're, that's healthy for our church, Okay? Um, filthy lucre, not given to, I haven't gotten not given to wine, and I already got, I already spoke about, you know, twice about that already. I think it's like, and I don't even want to like, not given to wine. I don't even think I have to like, like touch it. I don't think I have to, it's like, when do I stop? You know what, if I was given to wine, I would have been, you know, in, you know, in Delaware somewhere one night. I, I'm just saying, I don't know, maybe. Not given to it. There's this, no, I can't. I can't. I could tell you a story. <laughs> you want to hear a story? I'm, not, I'm, I'm free enough to tell this one. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going from, I'll tell it to you. I'm going from Moscow, no, St. Petersburg to Moscow. I'm on the night train. Okay? I'm free enough to tell you this one. Okay, so. And, and I got like, you know, it's like, it was kind of like maybe like 10 years ago, you know, I don't know. It's a little bit more dangerous then than it was then than it was now. Or like, and like you, you paid a little bit extra and it was like for safety. You know, because, you know, you know, we had quite a few, ex- I've had quite a few experiences like that. And uh, um, <laughs> I'm glad I'm telling it. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> I, I was like, uh, I was in this, this carriage, it's nice and clean, it's the air conditioned rooms and all that. I was like, oh man, I'm going to sleep so well tonight. And then there's this, there's this, this old man there. Not old man, but fairly old, and he's sitting in there and just kind of like this. He looked kind of sad. He speaks Russian, and I didn't really, I couldn't really communicate with him. And uh, um, so anyway, his two sons come. It's his two sons come in, and they one speaks a little bit of, and they said, "My mother has just died. We just had the funeral today." And. Uh, like, oh man, and then they're drinking, you know, in Russia they're drinking, right? They're drinking, just like, like that. And when they drink in Russia, they want you to drink with them, right? Is that true? <laughs> if anyone knows, they want you to drink with them. And it's like, you know, this guy, these, these are like these 30 old, and you know how like Russians are kind of like, some, a lot of them are bodybuilders and you know, kickboxers and like they know karate and all that. These guys are really built. These guys were really built. 
And so they're saying to me, like, <laughs> they said to me, drink. I said, no, 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 I, I don't know. No, no. And it was such a disgrace to them, you know, and their culture that I wouldn't, like, join in the sorrow. They said, drink, drink. And no, 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 I say, <laughs> you know, these two, two big, you know, like weightlifter karate guys are like, drink. I'm like, no, no, I'm okay. And they, I just, I'll tell this, I'm telling this story. And I literally, and I was like so fearful for my, they had these little shot glasses. I, I took one and I just like, I drank it. And I was just like, okay. And it made them happy. I, I'm just, I'm t I don't know why I'm telling this story. But I, I didn't lose my conviction afterwards. I actually, maybe I saved myself from getting beat up. They were literally, they were going to like destroy me. I was like laying there on my bed and they were like, uh, but why, why did I say that? Uh, because, because I can say it in purity right now. Do you know what I mean? I can say it in purity right now. It's like, that's, that's, and I, I'm so happy. Do you know what I mean? And I, maybe I, you know, saved myself from getting beat up really bad. You know, I go to like, say a business meeting or something. I don't drink, you know, they're not going to beat me up there. But, uh, you know, I, I'm glad, I'm glad I, do, I'm glad I, I'm glad I have the conviction. I'm glad I have the, and I can literally say that's the only time. You know, I'm so happy, like that's the only time that I've ever done it. I've only ever told one other person this story, and now I told a bunch of people, and I don't care. I don't care, okay? And it's not, it's not a license to sin, is it, for anybody? It's, a, it's an edifying conviction. And uh, so the two guys didn't beat me up. That's the, so... So we're not given to wine. We're not given to wine. It's great. It's healthy. It's not. It's spiritually healthy, okay. And uh, it doesn't satisfy. Uh, not not given to wine. No striker. A quarrelsome. Flat. Oh yeah. Let's look at that. He doesn't. He doesn't need wrath. He doesn't need his own wrath. In Proverbs chapter 29, verse 8. Proverbs 29, 8. Okay. Scornful. Oh, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Scornful men. Scornful men bring a city to a snare. Right? When men need like like wrath, do you know how much they can destroy? And they don't see opportunity. Their anger, you know, their anger causes like uh, their emotion their emotions start to fly and their 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 actions follow and they actually destroy something that they could have actually used as an opportunity to build. And there's so much regret afterwards when we use our, our wrath. Have you ever done that? Have you ever used your mouth incorrectly with wrath and regret it? Like um, uh, episcopos, uh, bishops, overseers, they don't do that. And we don't do that. And it's like we see the benefit. We Look at this. It says, but the wise man turns away wrath. Like he calms the fire. He doesn't put fuel. He doesn't put wood on the fire. He sees it as an opportunity, and it's like, God's going to do something here. Why throw something in on it that you're going to regret afterwards? He has, he's this wise man. Okay? So he's not, a, he's not quarrelsome. He's not always fighting. Okay, what's the next word? What's the next word there? Not greet, not a striker, not... Not greedy of filthy lucre. Not greedy of filthy lucre. Let's look at the First Timothy chapter six. You can always First Timothy chapter six. We can look at this. Poor people often think of money 
more than rich people? I'm just saying, don't be afraid of money. Don't let money be the thing that you fear. Fear God. Let God bring in the balance in our life. Don't think we're spiritual because you don't equate spirituality with poverty. And don't also don't equate wealth as like a blessing. Okay? There's a balance there. Right? Do you follow me? Okay? This is very... It's, this is... Uh, let's look at this. But godliness, verse 6, with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we carry nothing out. Amazing. <clears throat> Amazing. But we could save a soul. We could minister. We could give our life. We could serve God. We could know we're children and use our volition to choose God's way in our life. And we're all growing. None of us are perfect in this. We all have huge errors in our life. But we're growing. We're growing in grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And this is the other thing that's very important. That we don't know the, 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 uh, the overseers. We don't know the episkopos. We don't know. I'm just saying it so we learn the word. The presbyteros. The, these leaders in the church. After the flesh. Satan would love us to like see, oh, you know what? I'm a little more mature than they are in their life. And we know them after the flesh, and we focus on that one point in their life. And, we, and it destroys us from ever receiving anything from that person. We they, like challenge your mind never to know people after the flesh. And that's part about submitting one to another. When we, don't, when we know people after the flesh, we will never submit to them. And when we know leadership after the flesh, and that's Satan's desire, he wants to throw a little thought in there, and your friend agrees with you, and therefore you guys have a reason not to submit or not to receive from a leader. Okay? Watch that. Watch it. It's very important. Because uh, we, were, we were talking about uh, nothing in this world, food. Okay, we're having food and raiment. Let us therefore be content. But they that which, okay. Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of it. It's the love of it. It's the love. God, give me the correct balance. Let me, show me how to use my money. God, show me how not to serve money. God, show me how to like save money so I can do something with my money. God, like show me how to have the right balance in my life. I'm not going to be afraid of money that I say like I, I have a vow of poverty and say like I'm, I, I'm afraid of money and I'm going to kind of like force it on other people that if you're poor, you're spiritual. Okay. So it's like, I'm just, I just gave the other side about the you know, filthy lucre. Well, you can, you can read those verses. We really don't have time today. But uh, so the next, the next word that we're on, not greedy, not uh, be, be patient, not greedy, a filthy lucre, be patient, not, uh, 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 yeah. Be patient. That's that beautiful word, epiikis. Epiikis is amazing. Um, balance in the thoughts of our life. Like uh, a leader isn't like imbalanced in their thinking. They, they, they. It, I just give. I just give you an example. Like, he, he, Pastor Shabelli, okay? He, if you ever, like, like, worked with him, you would see his amazing balance in life. Do you know what I mean? It's like, he's, in, he's, I, it's just like, the full picture is so beautiful. He's so balanced. 
And you could easily, you could, you could, I mean, there's people you could imagine that are imbalanced. Just don't judge them. You just haven't seen their other side of their balance yet. Don't judge people so quickly. I think it's a good example, right? It's like, you know what I mean? It's like you should see his tenderness, his willing to submit one to another, his ability to listen, his loving kindness, you know? Pulling out of the in Liberia, pulling out of that 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 you you just saw him you saw him weep there, and he couldn't believe how how you know he's like trying to cover up the fact that he's crying, and it's like God has just used him so mightily, and he's so overwhelmed with the presence of God. He's like he he was sitting on the driver's side just weeping as we went home, like telling us, I can't believe how God has used me in Africa, you know, not bragging, but just just like that. This is very important that the word is epiikes. They have an extreme balance from the Holy Spirit in their life. Okay. Epi-E-I-P-E-K-E-S. Epi. Pretty close. Pretty close. Look it up. Look it up. You have to look it up now. Okay. You know where it exists, so you can find it, okay? It'll help you learn your Greek. Okay. Oh, okay, and look, not a brawler, not covetous. I don't... Not a brawler. Oh, peaceable. It's much... I didn't, this is be an interesting word. I think this is where the word, a, a brawler, I think a brawler speaks about macho, speaks of not a brawler. I have to look this up, but he's not a person that, that fights. Like he, he, doesn't, he doesn't have a reason to fight. He's not supporting his just cause. Okay, and then, and he that, not a brawler, not covetous. Um, okay, I've kind of gone over that already. And I just want to kind of go quickly here to the, is that, we, we've pretty well covered most of them. I want to skip down, right? You guys feel satisfied? Okay, okay. One that ruleth his own house, having his children in subjection. You know, in subjection with all gravity, the word gravity there actually refers to the parent. Okay? It's not like, you know, the, like the parent is extremely sensitive to the weight of God as they're leading their children. And he, the children are in subjection. Is He's a, very aware of God's method of loving people and leading people because he has this little flock that he's actually leading and he's, he's under the subjection of, he, he's under the gravity, the, the, the influence, the fear of God as he's leading his family. Like what's the difference? Do you know, okay? And that's a great lesson for anybody. You got a little, and, and a, I was thinking that, you know, that last verse of first. Timothy 2, you know, woman in childbearing. It's like you have, like just what like we're talking about here, a, a mother does it all. A mother has the opportunity to do it all. Everything we're talking about here, the way that they lead, all these words a mother has the opportunity to actually use in their life. But I don't know why I was saying that, but I, it's like don't never get like, like sometimes like position. Position is so exalted over like responsibility and like and, and position is uh is exalted over like the, the gifts of God and uh they're gifts from God and it's not about position and sometimes we equate like you know my like you know someone's an overseer that doesn't mean I don't have these qualities in my life and that I will never have these qualities in my life. You know, Pat Lynch is a coach. It doesn't mean he doesn't have these qualities in his life. Scott Dubay, you know, it doesn't mean he doesn't have these qualities in his life. Okay? 
Just because you don't have the office, it doesn't mean you're excluded from these qualities in your life. And you'll be able to receive from other people uh, the, the leadership. Okay, the ruler in his own house. For if a man know not, that's what I just said, not a novice, but she being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. More, not a novice. What is a novice? Huh? He's, well, base, it's like, wait, if you're going to choose, well, let's just look at it like this. If you're going to choose, like, if you're going to choose somebody that's really good and gifted, and he didn't even obey all these other principles, like, what are you doing? Maybe that's what he's saying. Maybe that's what Paul is telling Timothy. You've chosen a few men because you thought they were really gifted. Don't choose those guys again as your, as your, uh, Episcopos, don't choose them as your overseers. You made some mistakes there, Timothy. Don't do that because you saw they weren't like as, as developed spiritually as you thought they were, right? You know, remember, he's telling, he's telling Timothy this. He's relating this to the, the, the problems that exist in the church in Ephesus. He's, this is a personal letter. Some of these, some of these uh, 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 qualifications come from problems that Paul has dealt with, has seen in the church. Okay? And then we come back more of a good report. Remember, remember we said, look at verse 2. Blameless. And we said, verse 7, Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall in a reproach and a snare of the devil. Like, like he's blameless. He, he, nothing sticks to him. Like we read it in that proverb where he, you know, he's not first and he's not just in his own cause. Okay, so these are some of the qualities of an. What is the word? What is the, what is the uh, Greek word? What bishop, episcop, yeah, episcopos, and we learned the connection. Was that a, Juliet said this? Like she said she when because we identified that we don't realize sometimes the things that we don't know, right? With those words, we don't realize we don't know. And then when we're given a little bit of light on it, we're like, wow, that does really actually help me. Is this helpful tonight? And it should help us in our, in our relationship to our leaders also, to our pastor. Okay? Because remember, a, a pastor is leading people, and, and they're, 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 they're sheep. And it's very important how he uses his authority. You know what I mean? Because authority is so easily misused. But it doesn't take away the fact that we shouldn't have leadership. Okay? Yes? Taking verses 1st and 3, verses 2 and verses 4, for someone who is single with that same call, can you comment to that? Okay. He, he doesn't... Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, it says if well, I I, I would say if he is married. Was Paul married? Huh? Was Paul married? Pastor Kim, was Paul married? Yeah, maybe not. We don't we don't really know. Um. Can a man be an elder if he is? Uh, you don't have to be single like, say, the, the Catholic Church says. I mean, you don't have to be. But yes, I would say yes, you can be. Why, like, if you weren't never called to be, yes, if you're never called to be, I mean, if it never, you never were married, okay? And uh, if you show, uh, if you're a ruler of uh, what you do very well, yes, you could be. Uh, an elder. Why would that keep you from being an elder? Okay? Okay? Because he asked about a husband with one wife and then also a family. Okay?
Okay. Yes. Where? In First Corinthians seven. Forgive me, I don't remember the, 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 the book, but I thought he referred to himself saying that uh, to the church, I wish you all were like me, um, saying single, that, um, but referring to, to uh, marriage as uh, a fundamental need for, for uh, the development of humanity. Did, does someone in this room know which chapter, uh, which book I'm referring to? Yeah, I've, yeah. Is it, is it seven? Huh? Seven. Yeah. Do you want to comment on that, Pastor Kimo? Do you want to say something? I think you're right at that point in his life. Paul was either single or a widower, and. Um, it's very possible we never read about Paul being married, so he may have been single all his life. We don't know. Okay. Yeah. The phrase uh, that maybe part of this question is coming from is uh, the husband of one wife, which um, some scholars, which I tend to agree with, take in the sense of being a the kind of man who is faithful to one woman, regardless of he's married or not. That's a great, great point. Okay. Okay, the, the question, yeah, okay, so Pastor Kimo said that, Pastor Kimo, in re response to the question that Paul was married in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, that um, at that point, it's very, it's like very light, like he wasn't married, but it doesn't mean that he never was married, okay? And the other point, um, which he just made, how did you say that? Uh, the husband of one. Uh, oh, yeah. One. He is, it's like he has that characteristic, or he has that type of affection that he is the husband of one wife, right? Is that what you're saying? He's not flirting with women, okay? He's faithful. He's faithful to, to purity, okay? He's not using his. He's not using his singleness to actually, uh, you know, scope everybody out. And uh, he's not using his singleness as like a, uh, as a, uh, you know, something, you know, a tool that he's always got in his life, right? That I'm, oh, I'm single. You're like, I'm, you know, I walk in the room. I'm the available guy. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So once, we'll just close. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's. Okay, go ahead. Do you want to read it? It says, and can be to either unmarried or widowed. So I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide, even as I. So we don't really know based on that verse if he was unmarried or widowed. You know, it could almost even apply to, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, we're done. We're done now. We're going to close. Okay. So, okay, we're done.